Hey, Hebrew fans, this is Todd. So today I'm going to talk about the Super 7 Filmation He-Man and the Mattel Filmation, Filmation He-Man. So here's the two right here. Let's first do a comparison on these, and then I'll show you how to make a really cool fix. So first thing is you can tell, now this is actually the Faker head. He came with extra heads because he was the Ultimates, and he came with, you know, a big battle axe and um, a big shield and uh, three heads, I believe. So this is actually the faker head, and the faker head is kind of cool because it actually has glow-in-the-dark eyes. Let me show you. Hold on a second. Lights off. Okay. So you can see kind of his eyes glowing in the dark. Ooh, ah. Uh. Lights on. Okay. All right. So, um, something you can tell right at the bat, the difference is, if you take a look, you can see that the Super 7 one is way more shiny. See the difference? Even in the hands, you can see it's shining the legs. The Super 7 one just is way more shiny and not quite as dull looking. Another thing you can tell is normally in the head, the way the eyes look. Um, the, the Mattel one always has one eye off a little bit. You can see how his eye is just off a little bit. And that kind of stinks. Another way to tell is you turn them backwards. Um, the Super 7 one, the sword doesn't move, the sheath that holds it, but the Mattel one does move. So you can orientate the sword on the left or the right for the Mattel one. But for the Super 7 one, it's just stuck. You can't move. Another thing is the coloring. So you'll notice like, the shorts, the shorts are darker on the Mattel one, the Super 7 one is lighter, and same with the boots. Now the boots are really easy to tell, because um, the Super 7 has uh, actually a better boot built. If you take a look, you can see the boot is very tight up in here, and it has nice articulation, it has a new twisting movement where it actually kind of rocks in the front. And so I actually like the Super 7 boots better, where the Mattel boots had this really wide gap. And they also had the same problem with the, with the Skeletor ones, but only half of them had that problem. They fixed it in the, like a running fix where they actually fixed that gap. And then also the way they rotate is way different. You can see it has kind of like this weird articulation kind of rotate thing going on. And that's just really strange. So, in this video, I am going to show you how to take the boots from the Super 7 He-Man and put them on to the Mattel He-Man. Now, it may sound simple at first, but it's not really that simple, and I'll explain in a minute once they get these boots off these guys. All right, well, I have my hot water now. Let's go ahead and uh, put these guys in, and let's uh, see what their, their boots look like off. All right. Uh. You can see right there, I got them soaking in the, the hot tub of boot removal. Now, without waiting for that one, I've actually already pulled off the boots on the Mattel one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Mattel one. So here are the boots of the Mattel one. And you can see, again, they have that really weird gap. And if you take a look, the way these are indented is we have... Uh, kind of a indent right here and then it goes in and so that indent matches that circle right here on the leg and then the pin is about this long and the connection point is that far down so that's what we have going on with the Mattel feet so let's give us just a couple a little bit longer and we'll pull out the Super 7 one all right so let's take a look at this one see if it's hot enough to pull apart yet Oh, there we go. So, the Super 7 one is quite a bit different. You can see right off the bat, first of all, the nubs are different. So take a look there, and you can see that there are different lengths, and where they connect up to different places too. It's close, but not quite the same. It doesn't go quite as deep. So, to make these work, also they're flat on top. Let's look at the difference of the boots. Here's the Super 7 boot, and here is the Mattel boot. 
and you can see it's quite a bit different. These don't go very deep at all. So our goal is we have to actually drill this down deeper and then sand out an area that sh looks just like that shape. After we have that all sanded out, we're gonna actually make this extra big on purpose. And then we're gonna use some O-rings, these uh, 78 O-rings, and we are gonna actually glue them in place and then later on come back with some epoxy and then use these to fit over the legs. And you can see what's cool about these O-rings is I've found the right ones that just fit super tight right onto that spot. So once you have them attached to the boots, it makes a nice connection point. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on that. Okay, so my goal again is to get the round ring inside there to fit on this He-Man figure. It's still kind of tied in there, so I'm going to make the opening bigger. So I'm going to change out my Dremel tool. I like to use this pointed one for digging down deep. Okay, so you can see it's just kind of stuck right there. So I got to make this part deeper in there as well. So I will use this tool here to make that part wider. And I got two different versions of it. I got a flat version and a round version that has that indent. I think I might use a smaller flat one just to get in. It's a little bit newer bit. We'll see how that does. Now be careful doing this because that plastic can get really hot. And not only the plastic can get hot, but sometimes you can uh, cause a little more damage than you want to actually happen to the figure's boot. Very close. Now that top part fits, but now the bottom part's kind of hanging up. Let's go a little bit deeper on there and then I'll take the, the deep one again and go in there. Thank you. 
That looks pretty clean. Not quite so close, but yet so far away. Almost. Now what I might do is I can feel where that's kind of getting stuck a little bit. I think I might switch bits. Let me see what else I have in here. I have this nice little rounded bit here and that just might give me the exact size I need to make that fit right. Let me go and try that one out. That looks pretty clean in there. Let's go and see how it fits. Yeah, it fits pretty good. You can see it kind of sticks a little bit, it's what we want. And uh, so it's the right height and depth and everything else. Now it's just a matter of adding that black O-ring to there, gluing it in place, and then making that work. Let's move on to the other boot and get it ready. So you can do both, both boots at the same time. So, let me swap out this bit here, change it for this one. And you can see how deep that had to actually get to make it work right. It's unbelievable how much deeper you have to go to actually create that indent. Now again, we're going to add the O-ring right here. And once the O-ring's added in there, it will make it so it's a nice fit and just the right size. So the O-ring will go in there, something like that. And then we'll, we'll glue it in place and that will cinch the deal and make it so it all works just right.
Making sure I didn't affect the articulation at all. Looks like I did not, so that's cool. And that boot fits on there now too. So we got two boots that are nice and snug the way they should be. And now it is time to add the O-rings. So the best way to do this is to first use a little bit of super glue just to hold them in place. Now I have two different super glues here that I like to use. One, they're both Loctite, but one is the ultra liquid control and the other one is the, is the ultra gel control. The gel control is kind of thick and gooey and does a really good job at both holding it in place a little bit longer, giving me time to uh, orientate it left, right, sideways, whatever, before I stick on my epoxy. So let's go ahead and use the ultra gel. Now, I like to also use Q-tips. Q-tips cause the super glue to dry instantly. So that's, that's one of my keys that I use all the time. We got one half done. Now let's go to the other one. We'll just let that glue dry. Maybe we'll just work without pressure. All right, let's get that O-ring. Get it cleaned off. Super glue.
So like we saw in the other boot, the Super Ludus does not want to adhere. So we'll just leave it like that and see if it adheres on its own. All right, let's check out the first boot. It does feel like the super glue might have stuck a little bit in there. Let's do a little cleaning so we don't accidentally glue this to He Man's leg. Now, my fear is when I go to test this, it's just going to pop right off and I'll have to glue it back on. But we'll give it a shot and see. Oh, I can already feel it popping off. Yep. It just popped right off. So you can see how they kind of look alike. I'm just going to go ahead and go for the gusto and put our epoxy on there. I don't think that super glue is going to work good enough for me to actually test it like I normally do with most of my other boots that I do this with. Just because Super 7 used some kind of plastic that the super glue does not adhere to very well. So let's go ahead and mix up our epoxy and get going on that. So I have a two part epoxy resin and I'm going to use for this. I use the JB Weld Quickie Weld and it has my uh, JB Weld here. And I have the black and the white, and the black is the steel and the white is the hardener. So you're supposed to use two equal parts. And this should not take that much to do this. I got more on there than I wanted. Usually I get more than I want and I try to look around for stuff that I can glue before this stuff hardens all the way. It takes five minutes for it to set up. So you only got five minutes to get all the gluing you want done. Now when you mix this, I like to use this little screwdriver here. I use it all the time. And you need to mix it to us a consistent color of gray. There we go. And once you got the color consistent, I'm going to scrape it off on one side and the other. I'm going to pick up my boots. And my goal is to seal that in there completely with any extra area. I'm just going to put it right across the top here. Something just like that. So it's nice and 
smooth across the top there. Take off any excess you still have. Now for the other boot. Oops, sorry, I'm off the camera. All right, there we go. Now let that stuff harden up and we'll test it in about 10 minutes. Okay, so this is getting kind of hard, so it's ready almost to go on. But before we do though, I wanna put a light coat of paint on it just so that we can uh, um, not have any extra black hanging around around the edges. So to mix this paint, we're going to use some brown. And I want you to notice the shade. It doesn't match, but it's close. Burp. A couple drops of brown on there. And I'm going to mix some red in it too. And this red will make it so that it matches the boot color better. Now, red is a very strong color, so you want to bring the red to the brown to mix it. Not, don't just bring it all in together. So just take a little bit of red and then mix it into your brown. And then keep doing this until you get about the same, uh, the same, same uh, coloring as the boot. Now, it's, you want it to be lighter in color because uh, when it dries, it will dry darker but you want it to be at least the same color, just a lighter version of that color. I think that looks pretty good. So now let's just take and do our final mix. And we're doing, I'm scraping this on the edge of the, the cup to try to get it all collected together in one area and mixed well. Now just take a little dab and see how close we are. That looks.
looks pretty good. So now I'll just paint around this edge right here. And this way, when I put the boot on, it won't have any black residue. That will be visible from the top of the of the shin. If I wanted to, I could paint the whole entire thing, but I just want to just make sure that edge all the way around is just going to look good when it goes together. Looks pretty good. We'll let that dry before we put it together. Then we'll heat up these boots and we'll put it together. Funny, whenever I do this, one boot always seems to come out way better than the other. I don't know why that is. It's not always the left or the right. It just seems to be one of them always comes out really good. And this is the one that came out really good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clean out my paintbrush. And I'll be back and restart the video. And then I'll put them together because he is anxiously waiting for his new boots. All right, so a lot of time has passed. The boots are painted, ready to go. You can see how the color matches pretty good. And so now I'm just going to take and toss them in some hot water. And let's get them ready to go on to He-Man, who is patiently waiting for some boots. So you can get back to walking around. So let's drop those in there. Give them a few minutes to heat up. Meanwhile, he is waiting. I can use my boots, it would really help. Let's stick that light on while I'm waiting. Now, for those that don't, don't know yet, I just put my Orco and uh, um, Shadow Weaver stands on eBay and uh, started the bid at five bucks. So, if you want to get a set of those before they're all gone, this is the first set I'm putting up. I'm gonna have a very, a very limited run on those, so. If you want some, if you're interested, now's the time to get them. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and pull these out and uh, stick these on He-Man. Oh, this is kind of hard to fish them out of here. curve goes on the inside match that up and it should be nice and pliable and just jam them on there there we go it's a nice tight fit let's jam the other one on there there we go also another nice tight fit all right so there is my He-Man. Oh, let me just lower this a little bit. Nerve. 
And the cool thing, it is a Mattel He-Man with corrected boots. So now he has the small, thin, little uh, gap instead of the big old wide gap that we saw when Mattel first released them. So that is pretty cool. So that is my He-Man fix. And the cool part is the original boots still unaltered, untouched, and the original bottom of the legs still unaltered, still untouched, so I can put them back to the original shape and form. So, quick recap, a quick way to tell if you have an original He-Man um, from Mattel or the Super 7 one. Three ways to tell. One is the Super 7 is shiny. The, the Mattel is not. The sword can rotate on the back. It's another quick way to tell. Where the sword cannot rotate on the back of the Super 7 one. The loincloths are different. This one tucks underneath and it's not as detailed. It has some little scratch marks on it and stuff. Where this one has all kinds of globbly clusters and is open in the bottom. And then the coloring is darker on the Mattel version for both the loincloth and the boots. And um, the actual articulation of the boots is completely different where the ankle is. So you can see the Super 7 is actually the superior one where the Mattel one has this weird new kind of articulation they tried to introduce towards the end, which just is not a very good, good articulation. It just looks ugly. Which is why we gave the Mattel He-Man, the superior He-Man, the superior boots. And now we have cool He-Man with cool boots. All right. That's all I got, you guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next video. Bye now.